Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of um, today's NFT news, five under 10. Um, the five articles I've picked for now are, um, number one is this one, um, earn unique NFTs of US presidents with a pixel POTUS. Then the second one is gonna be Instagram plans to implement NFT collectibles on user profiles. The third one will be rage fan to airdrop limited edition NFTs at Wembley Stadium for Euro 2020. The fourth one is going to be this one, uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, NFTs, uh, market clocks, 2.5 billion sales volume in um, the first half of 2021. And the last one will be this one, uh, Twitter suspends Splinterlands from its services permanently. All right, let's jump straight into the first one. Um, so earn uh, unique NFTs of US presidents with Pixel Potus. I um, picked this one, obviously, we just had the 4th of July. I thought it was quite fitting. Um, so yeah, you can see kind of here, um, Pixel Potus launches their NFT collectible card game with flying colors as the as the Tenos, uh, sorry, T, uh, Tezos uh, community welcomes pixelated presidential tokens with open arms. Just halfway through uh, 2021, and we can see non-fungible tokens, or NFTs for short, um, becoming a staple in every cryptocurrency enthusiast's diet. With the NFT market total transaction volume reportedly tripling in 2020 alone, NFT utilities and use cases continue to appear and evolve throughout every corner of the cryptocurrency space. Okay, so just to dive into this article a bit more. Um, so what is Pixel Potus? So accurately named Pixel Potus, uh, this NFT collectible card game features digital POTUSes, so presidents of the United States, um, in their finest pixelated suits lined up for integration. There are a total of 45 POTUSes available, each with a total of six levels of rarity um, as players combine cards to upgrade their um, favorite POTUSes. Okay, so how does it work? So you can get free POTUSes today. All players are able to claim a free, um, there's an asterisk there, um, inclusive of like a minor uh, Tezos um, network fee. Um, common POTUS tokens per day. So yeah, so you can cl you claim one, one per day, you will pay a small fee for the uh, uh, Tezos network, uh, network fee. Um, to mint uh, increasingly higher rarity version of each digital POTUS. So what happens is you'll have to burn lower levels in order to get like the higher levels. Um, just one here. 20% um, of all claim and unregistered, uh, sorry, 20% uh, of all claim and upgrade fees enter a prize pool, a smart contract dubbed the treasury. And once a player reaches the highest level of rarity, they can make a claim against the treasury contract and receive a 25% payout. So I thought this was pretty cool. Um, in the NFT business, just the time of year it is. Um, so yeah, you can basically collect free POTUSes every day. There is only a few of them, I, think, I believe. Um, and uh, then you can, when you have multiple of the same, I'm pretty sure that's how it works, you can you can burn, burn them and you can kind of upgrade to a rare one. If you are one of the first to get to the top, you will, um, yeah, get a payout. So that's pretty cool. So I wanted to touch on that one there today. It might be uh, fun to, to start doing. I'll, I'm gonna look into this myself. I think if you wanna, if you think it's interesting, let me know in the comments and I'll um, I'll give this a go. And uh, yeah, I'll obviously share my findings with you and uh, explain how it all works. So let me know what you think about that one. Okay, moving on to the next one. So Instagram plans to implement NFT collectibles on user profiles. Uh, Paluzzi revealed that both Instagram and Twitter are weighing up big updates for the current offering with Twitter considering two new services via Chipper Cash and Wealthsimple. I thought that was quite interesting because I wasn't actually aware that, that Twitter was also looking into upgrading stuff. Um, so Instagram posts that, um, sorry, Instagram posts that offer NFTs will have the collectible label on them. So this will notify users that there's actually, um, that they can, they can purchase an NFT on the post. And although Instagram is yet to publicly announce the launch of an NFT offering on its platform, the social media company uh, reportedly has made mention of potentially adding payment features to the platform. Um, so then down here, they kind of describe um, what it was. So what he says is, uh, this is a quote. Um, uh, one of the things they can do, right? So, so this is a quote here. So one is commerce. So either we can do more uh, to help with branded content. We can do more with affiliate marketing. We can do more with, more with merchandise. Um, the next thing is ways for users to pay creators directly, whether it is uh, gated content or subscriptions or tips uh, or badges um, or other user payment type products. Uh, I think there's a lot of ground to cover here. So that's the quote. So basically they're looking in, in other ways to help their users uh, earn money. Um, if I go down a little bit more, then it says here, uh, the photo and video sharing social networking platform could also reportedly follow in the footsteps of OnlyFans and uh, Patreon. 
uh, Patreon uh, by offering planning a paid service ex uh, for exclusive fans or Instagram creators. So I, I picked this article here for NFTs because um, I thought it was pretty cool that Instagram is looking into NFTs that um, yeah, you'll have the option to buy, um, I'm, I'm guessing certain videos and, and, um, and photos. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's what I'm, what, the reason I picked this out is that it's, it's becoming more and more mainstream. Um, so that's pretty cool. The next one here, um, Rage Fan to Airdrop Limited Edition NFTs at Wembley Stadium for Euro 2020s. So um, I don't know um, for, for all the Americans and others, uh, non-Europeans out there, if you actually follow the Euro 2020s or not. But um, right now we're, um, we've reached the finals. Um, so I think today it's uh, Spain against Italy. Um, but that, that's what that's all happening at the uh, at the Wembley Stadium. Um, and what you can see here is Rage Fan, a fan first decentralized fantasy sports platform, will airdrop limited edition NFTs um, during the Euro uh, 2020 semi finals and final matches to be played at Wembley um, on the 6th, 7th, 11th of July. So that's uh, also today. Um, for the first time, NFTs will be minted and distributed based on a specific event like the Euros. Um, these NFTs will only be available at the venue slash location uh, for a specific match and date. The NFTs will be scarce as only um, 10 limited edition NFTs will be minted per game. And the NFTs can be collected by uh, football fans in attendance during these matches at the Wembley Stadium using Rage Fans Scramble mobile app for Android. So I just wanted to mention that if you are going to the matches, um, and you do have an Android phone, it might be worth getting the, uh, the Scrambled mobile app because uh, who knows what these, uh, these collectibles might be worth in, uh, in the future. Um, and then in the article here, you can see like how to download it and how it all works. So check out the link if you are uh, interested, check out the link in the, um, in the, uh, the description below. Um, even if you're, uh, <laughs> maybe if you live close to the stadium, it might be worth just driving over to see if you can uh, kind of collect it without, even if you don't have a ticket, but hey, that's, uh, that's up to you. Um, number four, next article, uh, non-fungible tokens, so NFTs, market clocks 2.5 billion sales volume in the first half of 2021. Now, the reason I picked this one was actually just to kind of show you guys that the, uh, um, yeah, NFTs aren't, they're not dying down, right? The, this is uh, here to stay. Um, I think the use case might change a little bit in the future, but um, I just want to show you like it's actually still growing pretty quick. So here, um, as per the latest Reuters report, the NFT market has clocked over 2.5 billion in sales volume during the first half of 2021. Uh, this is nearly 20 times uh, more than the 13.7 million sales uh, registered during the first half of 2020, so only a year ago. Um, the report for the notice uh, notes, sorry, that the majority of NFT sales um, has come in the first, or sorry, in, in Q2, the second quarter of this year. So it's just picked up. Um, since March 2021, buyers have totaled uh, 10 to 20,000 per week, outnumbering the sellers at the same time as per data on nonfungible.com. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to point, point that out. Um, NFTs are growing fast um, and the, the highest or the, the most part of the sales, I guess, coming from uh, last quarter. All right, and the last one here. Uh, Twitter, suspends Splinterland, uh, uh, Twitter suspends Splinterlands from its services permanently. Um, I wanted to just have a quick look at this one. Don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, I also can't highlight here in the text, so uh, see if I can remember which parts I wanted to cover pretty quickly. Um, so here, um, so Splinterlands is a blockchain-based NFT uh, trading card game um, that has been permanently banned from Twitter after, um, yeah, has, it's been use, using the, pl the platform like for, for since, what is it, 2018? Um, and miraculously so, uh, Splinterlands suspension coincided with Twitter's own NFT being released. So one must question if that has to do with each other. Um, yeah, so basically I'm not, I'm not familiar with the game. Um, I did want to point it out here, just that y'all know that Splinterlands was, a, uh, was one of the first games to embrace the unique uh, properties of non-fungible tokens as part of the platform experience allowing players to acquire, trade, and combat with rare NFTs. Um, on June 23rd, the company's Twitter account was removed from the network for no apparent reason. Um, and this was carried out with, um, without prior notice or explanation. Now we all know how Twitter works once you cross a line or whatever it is, once they just don't agree with you, you're gone. And well, we've seen many uh, Twitterers been deleted. Um, yeah, so I'm not familiar with Splinterland. Um, but uh, yeah, it might be something I have to look into just to see what it was and how it works. But I just want to let you know that it has been removed from Twitter. Um, okay, guys, that's um, all the NFT news for today. 
Um, yeah, if you like the content, please do um, do like and subscribe. I'm really trying to get to the uh, the 1,000 subscribers, and I'm pretty close right now, and I'll remake my day. <laughs>